Welcome to the Royal Rumble review, review, ladies and gentlemen. As I've said before, I'm not. Wa I'm. I'm still watching Raw. I have not really seen much of TNA because of my situation. Because either the medication knocks me out, or I'm in a, a lot of pain, so I can't really watch anything. But I did watch this Royal Rumble, so I am doing a review of it. We didn't really have that many matches for this. There's only five matches, which is understandable. They tried to stretch out the Royal Rumble pretty long. But I do believe that the organization of the other four matches could have easily been changed. Firstly, when it came to Kevin Owens and it came to Dean Ambrose, I do not believe it was the wisest thing to do for them to be put to open the show. They've been doing this for more than a couple of years and it's not just stale and old, it's pathetic. What I would have done for myself was to allow either ADR and Callisto to start, or which would have been the best option, allow Charlotte and Becky Lynch to start the show. So I'm going to start with them. Just in case, well, see in disrespect, I'll put book the positions right now. I'm booking the positions of where they should have been. But I'm not going to book the outcome because we already know what the outcome is. But Charlotte versus Becky. Was it a good, good match? That's not the key here. The match is not even the point. The point is, did they give us a good, compelling story going into it? To a certain extent, yes, they did. Because Becky and Charlotte have been friends. They tried to hype it up with some video segments and promos. Wasn't that bad. But here's the problem for me personally. It wasn't the match that was the issue. It was after the match. Because finally they decide to throw Sasha Banks into the mix. Now, I should be really happy about that. And to a certain extent, I am. But I'm actually very angry. You guys tell me below. Sorry, I'm still kind of moving around. Uh, I think the kidney stone's out of my kidney, but everything else hurts everywhere else. I think because of where it is. I don't know where it is. It hurts. But essentially speaking is this. When it comes to Sasha Banks, she should have been built way better before being thrown at Charlotte. Because when it comes down to it, this is just cannon fodder for Charlotte Flair. Because the crowd was ecstatic in Florida to see her come out. They've been wanting her to be dealing with the champion for a while. But you guys tell me below, when was the last time you saw a Sasha Banks win a match by herself? I haven't. The last time I believe she legitimately won a match on Raw was six months ago. Six. I could be wrong about the amount of months it's been. But it's been well over four months since she's won one match without Tamina backing her up or about Naomi backing her up. And that's my issue because these... These two women are about to face one another. And it's an obvious thing that they're going to put over Charlotte. Even though this is a compelling possible story for WrestleMania. And I've seen the Sled Daddy's own thoughts about WrestleMania. Snoop Dogg versus Ric Flair. I wouldn't mind seeing that. But here's the problem. I don't believe they're going to go there. And if they do go there. Which I don't believe they will. Sasha's been built so badly, why should I even give a fuck? I want to see Sasha Banks built properly, and I'm not getting that. Next, ADR versus Callisto. Now, the reason that I'm putting it second is because this could have easily been on a pre-show. I'm sorry. Because John Cena's hurt, ADR really has nothing to do. That's the reason for the match. And we get Callisto. Not against Callisto. Right now, Sin Cara is hurt. He hurt his shoulder. So he's not there. There's no Lucha Gra Dragons until Sin Cara's shoulder gets better and he can come back. And that's Hunico. But they got to do something with Callisto. He's still red hot from Lucha Dragons. So they're going to give these two back and forth matches. Kind of like what happened with Randy Orton and John Cena. That's what we got here, ladies and gentlemen. A Randy Orton-John Cena feud. We're basically going to go back and forth for quite a long time trying to get the, the title back and forth. It's like hot potato. Who's got the potato? Is it going to be Sin Cara? I mean, not Sin Cara. Callisto? Or is it going to be ADR? 
In this case, ADR drops a damn thing. Really. This is the way it is. ADR is basically doing nothing right now. It's sad. I was very worried about ADR coming back and having nothing. Being treated badly. And he has. This is what I was worried about. Sin well, I'm saying Sankara. I guess I have Sankara in the brain. Or oh, my back is really hurting me. And that could be because of my kidney stone. Sorry. But you get my point. ADR, who was treated so badly when he left the company of racism, comes back given the title and given almost nothing to do with that title. And the only person that could give him some relevance, which is John Cena, he's out until after WrestleMania, or maybe, maybe he may be there around WrestleMania, which I doubt. But this is what we got. The Usos versus the New Day. They got now, what is it? Francesca the sec. I say Francesca the second, or Fran. What Xavier Woods could have done is said, here's the daughter of Francesca, not Francesca too. This is Fran Francesca's daughter. That would have been better. It would have been something a little different. I know it sounds a little cliche and corny, but I think I would have liked it more than that. But still, the story was nice. They did a very good job. The match itself was good. I would have liked to see a little more interaction with the Usos before they got in there. And the Usos speaking a little bit more, doing a little more Uso crazy. But in the end, New Day kept their titles, which I'm not surprised. I mean, the Usos are still hot and relevant, but New Day is still hot enough that they're just over in the merch. They're just over when it comes to the cheering. So I'm not surprised they changed hand. They didn't change hands here. Finally, when it comes to the last man standings match, I really believe this should have happened before the Royal Rumble. This is just me. That's what I've been setting up in this card. I know I could have put the Usos in between ADR and Callisto, but I felt like it would have been better to build up into the Royal Rumble, particularly who the, who the people we saw in it. So the last man standings match was good. Kevin Owens doing that. Woo. That had to hurt. Going through two tables had to hurt. I'm sorry. In the end, he, Dean wins. But here's the problem. Dean really hasn't won anything. I really felt Dean hasn't really won anything. But you know who could win? If he got his hands on the IC title? Chris Jericho. This is how I feel about it. Let Chris have the title. Do something with it. But let's go into Royal Rumble. Now, I could talk about the people who were in the line from 1 all the way to 30. I'm just going to talk about a few people in the match. The first person I'm going to talk about that pissed me off so much is R-Truth. Um, look, I know that a lot of people like R-Truth. I don't hate him. But this stupidness of him acting totally absent-minded and like he has no freaking brain in his head does not work for me. The guy has talent in talking. The guy can truly be a good heel if he's given the trigger. Now, either he doesn't want to pull the trigger or the WWE believes that he being a stupid moron is better than him being a real credible heel. So seeing him grab a ladder and go into the ring acting like there's a type. Are you serious? That was dumb. Them throwing these funny things into the Royal Rumble doesn't always work. Like Kofi Kingston, every year he does something really spectacular. But you know what? I'd rather have Kofi not do something spectacular at least once out of the year. So it would give us something refreshing. But again, he gets something with New Day, which I didn't like. When it came to Brock Lesnar. Hmm. So is Brock going after Bray Wyatt now? And the Wyatt family? I guess so. He just got kicked out of the ring by Braun Strowman that he kicked out, by Luke Harper, who he kicked out as well, and Eric Rowan, who basically Brock Lesnar kicked out as well. All three of these guys got their ass handed to him by Brock and got kicked out. They came back in the ring and threw him out. Now, it makes some sense because they didn't want to have some type of controversy between Brock and Triple H. That's understandable. They didn't want to have Triple H seem to be going up against a monster that's unbeatable one-on-one. -on -one. But then you're going to have Brock Lesnar deal with the Wyatts. I don't know if that's going to work before WrestleMania. I mean, I think that's going to hurt him. 
And then there's Bray Wyatt himself. You see him dealing with Brock Lesnar, and then just before he starts fighting Brock, he's acting scared like a chicken shit, which was the stupidest thing to do. Him doing that with his character really made no sense. He's the eater of worlds. He's not supposed to be afraid of anybody. But then he acts like that with Brock, which I really felt hurt Bray Wyatt's... Uh, whew, excuse me. <laughs> that hurts Bray Wyatt's position. The person that I loved seeing back was Sami Zayn. He went right after Kevin Owens, kicked his ass, and now we actually could have a very good feud if Sami Zayn is still on, going to be on the main roster. There's no guarantee he will. There's a possibility he's just seen once and he goes right back to NXT to do what he's doing. And Deluxe Man, if anyone sees Deluxe Man and, and he ever sees this, dude, I do respect your work. And I do have the understanding of your point about NXT being the better part of the brand of WWE. And I can understand why it would be better for Sami Zayn to go back because he's really not getting anything if he goes on the main roster. Look at Kevin Owens. He, he should be dominant and he's a piece of crap. So I can understand his point of view of it. But in this respect, if you have to have Sami Zayn on the roster, it would be a brief period of about a month. That's the way I'm seeing it. I would rather see Sami Zayn for the next month going halfway into February, just for a month, so people get a taste of him, and then send him back to NXT, where hopefully people will be more interested in that section of the brand than the WWE. And I do have something I need to say at the end of this review about NXT and the WWE, but I'll talk about that in a minute. The one person that I was truly happy to see was AJ Styles. Now, I did see on YouTube that he was kind of dropping the hint that he was going to be there. And it was wonderful to see him there. A part of me kind of wished he could have taken the music that was from TNA, his last brand of music, not Get Ready to Fly, but the other one. I felt could have actually worked for him better than the song that they used for him. Now, that could have been from New Pro Japan Pro Wrestling, which I don't believe. That's probably something they did in-house. It wasn't bad, but it really doesn't fit his personality. It just doesn't. He feels like he could still have some aspects of the personality in TNA before he left. The, the lone wolf that is ready to eat you alive. That I felt would have been better. But since TNA will not release that music to WWE or anyone else for that matter. This is what we got. And AJ did a great job. He lasted about almost 29 minutes. I loved it. But I am afraid for him because in the end if he goes on the main roster... They don't treat people very well from another company all the time when they throw them on the main roster. So if he does go to NXT, maybe he'll have a better situation, particularly if Samoa Joe is still there, which I believe he is. But you never know. Last but not least, let's talk about the Triple H and the Roman Reigns. When it came to Roman, halfway through the match, they took him out. And I felt... I'm going to give it to you like this. I felt there was only... Two people, two, that could have won the title. I did at a couple of weeks ago think it was three. But now I figured it had to be two. Now it had to be either Triple H, because I do agree with the Slug Daddy, that they need someone that has the most power that people love. But the other person I felt that could have been an alternate was Chris Jericho, because he was the first unified champion. And I felt that after all that the WWE has put him through, having him job his freaking ass out and almost doing nothing, this could have been a reward for him because he is still a good talker. He still works well in the ring. It, it would have worked better for me personally. But in the end, Chris was taken out. Brock Lesnar was taken out. Roman Reigns was taken out by Triple H. And now Triple H is the champ. Game, set, match. He's now done. He is now champ. But what does that mean for us? Essentially speaking, we're going to have generally a better product. There is no way Vince is not going to put over Triple H. Triple H has not only... If you take away from him marrying his daughter and having sex with her with her big fake breast, Triple H in most cases has always been the go-to for Vince. To a certain extent, next to Austin. This is just my point of view, ladies and gentlemen. It's always going to be someone different. But Triple H, politicking or not, 
has been the one that the WWE has gone back to to try and do some storyline, to try and do some progression or some interest in the product. And the way things are going, you don't have Daniel Bryan, you don't have Seth Rollins, you don't have John Cena, you don't really have The Undertaker, he's not there. Sting hasn't shown himself. Cesaro is not there. Tyson Kidd is not there. He's hurt as well. Some very good wrestlers that's good for the product that should be there are not. So in the end, they ran out of options. So they had no choice but to throw the title on him. And you know with him with the title, they'll give him more progression, more storylines, and something that will build into WrestleMania 32. Was the show a good show? Uh, you can say it's questionable for the first couple of matches. They weren't the problem. It was There was very little storyline with these matches. That was the issue. Match quality, all of them were easily good. They were all easily B matches. Some like like um, ADR and Callisto could have easily is easily a raw match. The Usos versus New Day, that's easily a raw match. The last man standing's match was a good match. That's easily near pay per view quality, near. And Charlotte versus Becky. Easily is pay-per-view quality, but for NXT quality, to a certain extent. It wasn't great. I mean, NXT, and this kind of fits into what I want to say before I end this. I had been watching NXT on and off for the last year or so. I guess the reason I haven't done reviews on it and haven't watched the product completely is because I had the fear that I would not want to watch Raw at all. I guess that's the reason why I've been highly resistant to watching NXT on a constant basis. Because NXT is a good product. I have seen it. I have seen aspects of it. But the problem for me is that, like SmackDown, I've totally lost interest in SmackDown because it was so bad. I don't want to lose interest in Raw, but then I want to be interested in TNA. So, seeing the aspects of the WWE upset me a lot. But this is just my point of view. How about you? So I hope you enjoyed this Royal Rumble 2016 review. Please give me a comment below. My next book in the wrestler of John Cena, which is the last one. John Cena vs. The Undertaker either is coming out tonight or tomorrow. I don't know yet. Um, I have something I have to do today, so I don't know. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you want. Or a thumbs, uh, a thumbs down. Have a good day and have a good night. Peace.